Alright guys, I have good news, and then more good news. The good news is, is that my bed doesn't squeak anymore. Thank goodness. Hi, Teddy. Uh, <laughs> the person who fixed it moved uh, these things. Yes, I have a baseball bat. Who doesn't? But, uh, yeah, this was the problem. Wait. wait. Okay, did... What the frick? There's pinwheels coming from every single direction. Oh my god, okay. Okay, this, okay, actually, this problem I never actually said in the video, but recently, like, the left side of my bed was squeaking, so if I woke up on the left side of my bed, and if I moved at all, it was like, it would squeak so loud, and I'd be like, holy crap! But anyway, uh, I, I, I had a plan for a different video, but instead I decided to review Dog, Dog Man Unleashed. This, I, <laughs> It's been ages. It's how how long has it been? Three months since my first Dogman review. Oh my God, though! Just look at the thickness of this cover. Look at the thickness of this, and then compare it to the thickness of this book. Like it's. I think this is larger than any other Captain Underpants book. Like obviously not if you put them all together. Put them all together. That's as if you just take all twelve books and put them together. That's like this thick, minus the covers. So maybe like this thick. I don't know. Like you couldn't even see my other hand. I don't think, I don't think the light will even really fill in the screen. Anyway, don't man unleash. Let's go. Lighting's kind of weird because it's night outside now, but eh. Okay, so anyway, uh, purple inside cover. That's been, you can tell this is brand new and I haven't really read it much because it's tough to open. Okay, anyway, so you open it up, you get the inside cover, blah, 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 your chapter introduction, you introduce to Jordan Harold, who catch you up on what happened in the first Dogman book. I do like that Dave Pilkey is adding color to his books now, though. I swear, these kids will never learn how to spell laugh. It turns out it's the chief's birthday, and they want to celebrate that, and they decide to get a fish, and this guy says, and they aren't filthy and obnoxious. Wow, I wasn't expecting a word that big so early on. Glorama here. I think he needs to upgrade it and like make it like into little uh, flip books. I, I have flip books up here, I've never shown you them. These little things, they like come on, like each one tells a different story. It's like a, this one, it was a, it's like a, that, this, and this one I think has the movement be the best. Oh my goodness, I just realized I was saying Dave Pilkey when it's obviously George and Her Oh, it is Dave Pilkey. Huh. Oh, Dogman comes in that makes a mess, but... Pretty colors, come on. You can't deny that you would totally go and dive into the ball pit if you saw this many pretty colors in there. We got some more Fliporama. Oh my goodness, did Dogman just break his arm? Oh my god, he did break his arm. Okay, now, just letting you know, anyone who wanted to see romance in a Captain Underpants book, here is some um, page of 30, 37 already, wow. But, uh, yeah, it only lasts for 1.3 pages, so few. I think it's getting fish. And then, this is how you keep something secure, man. You put it behind a door that says employees only. So, like, no random person who has a brain would go in there. You know, like it says, employees are only, unless you have a really good reason, or you're just super curious. Then, there's a keep outdoor in that employees only. So, I'm assuming, like, only, like, the top people like these guys can go in this section. Well, mainly this person, because I think that he's experiencing it for the first time, judging by his face. Um, but mainly employees, I don't think, goes in there. And then, inside that, there's a danger flap. With a ladder, like no one would be, in, anyone would be insane to go into the employee's door, go into the keep out, and then go down a danger, and then go down a ladder where it's pitch black and stuff like that. Although personally, even though the fish does come in handy later, like I just have no idea, like other than for laughs, laugh, laugh. <laughs> Don't wonder when Jordan Hell they're gonna learn how to spell that word. But like, nothing's wrong with the fish. I mean, like they're saying that it was a bully to the other fish, but like. Up until he swallows those smart pills, like, for now, he's just a normal fish. So the instruction of the smart pills that they got for the chief to make him smarter so that he remembers stuff better says, Don't take a lot. Oh, sorry. Directions. Don't take a lot. Never more than a dot. A dot? Okay. Or something may happen. We ain't saying what. 
Ooh, foreshadowing, and oh my goodness, it's going to the fishbowl. Have a nice little how the Grinch stole Christmas ripoff, and then holy crap, what happened here? So Dollar Man saves them, and then meanwhile Petri's trying to figure out how to get out of jail, where he makes a paper thing, and then he fake flat Stanleys himself. <laughs> How stupid is this police officer? As soon as it picks him up, he can clearly see that it's made out of paper. And then Petri starts feeling empathy. Cops are saying like, don't you die on me. Jeez, that's a bit of a strong word, die. But, wait a minute, why did the cops say that he was gonna call 911? Isn't the cops part of 911? Also, why does it say that the fish's brain grew 11 sizes that day? I mean, if, 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 there it is. No, that's oddly specific. So, the, what's the word? Parademic? No, the, the medicine, the, the ambulance people, I'm just going to call them because I can't think of the word for them right now, takes them to a phony wizard who just brings the paper thing to life and then he totally home alones his way out of there. But then the wizard proudly says that he will stop Petri by spraying him with the dust that'll make him his servant. Only Doctor Who fans will really recognize that reference. But, oh my god, why would you say that? The paper thing can easily just run away. Why is it just standing there? Well, no, it's jumping, but then he folds himself into a fan, and then a nice little flipper ram manages to blow it right back into the wizard's face. But, like, how does it work then? So it's like, but the wizard still sprayed it. So, 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 so what, so what decides, like, like, when you get sprayed with the obey thing, what decides who you're obeying? Well, like, like, I'm assuming whoever sprayed it, which is ridiculous enough, but, like, so, the, it, does, is it whoever talks to that person first? I don't know. Grandma Petri build this up. Whoa, this shot looks awesome. Well, it's not a shot, it's a picture, but it looks awesome. So this mysterious guy, wildly looks like Petri from his legs. Uh, steals some treasure chests, not knowing that they're not filled with real gold, and he's just saying, like, no, 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 they're not real gold, and he's like, what, so where can I get real gold? And then, Petri starts going around with a love ray. Why a love ray? Why, of all things, are you using a love ray? You got it from... What the... Oh, okay. My finger was leaning on the zoom-in button. I didn't know it was that. He got it from this shelf. So what else is on here? A vase and a robot head. Why does he just randomly have something this powerful in a closet? So what the heck is this? How does this thing work? Okay, so the only reason why I can think of Dave Pilkey or George and Harold or whoever was writing this book, I'm saying Dave Pilkey because that's what it says on here, uh, I can only think that they're using a love potion because either, you know, like, love potions are pretty disturbing for kids, and indeed they are. They are still disturbing for me, but, you know, I've seen pretty much everything that can be done with a love potion, so I've gotten kind of used to it now. Well, this is a love ray, really, or a love zapper, I don't know, it's a love ray. Okay, anyway, uh, or he's trying to support gay people again. Anyone who's watched my review of Book 12 knows that I'm not trying to sound... Then, I don't know, I'm gonna upset people now. I'm just saying, like, this love ray works on both females and males. And it has been made pretty clear by the pronouns that Petri is a male. Although, even if it was a female, it works on females anyway. But the point is that, like, I think Dave Pilkey might just be wanting to, you know, like, because, like, his 12th book got banned because Harold grows up to be gay. They made, like, it, was, it wasn't even important to the plot, really. They could have easily just made... Excuse me, sorry. Um, they could have easily just made Harold have a wife, and none of the plot elements would have been changed at all. They made no big deal out of the fact that he turns out to have a husband, and like, it's not like him having a husband influences the plot at all. They just randomly say it casually, and then, yeah, and then of course his husband appears in a few pictures here and there. But, and then his book gets banned for that. And then everyone's like, oh, the, my kid's not, not, not old enough to know about gay people, or, oh, it might make him want to be gay. Joey. Joey, do you hear this? Do you hear, oh, wh what is it? Do you still have the tag? I've had you for years. Yeah, anyway, um, okay. Well, that's the book. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what I was leaning on there. So... But straight people is fine? You're fine with your kid growing up to be straight? Because of influences? Like, oh my goodness, it's so stupid. But anyway, Dave Pilkey just <coughs> applause for you making a love ray that doesn't just work on the opposite sex. I'm looking at you, Love Potion number nine. That's a movie that's like PG-13, so don't watch it till you're like a teenager. Dog man does a superhero land and then Petri's all just like, 
Why have we spent all our time fighting? Why well, feel so much better to love? Oh my god, that line just gives me... I don't want to say the chills, but it just gives me... Then it turns out that Dogman just dodged it and is now playing with the thing like it's a ball and then he saves the day or something. Petri brings a T-Rex to life and then uses the old base spray on him and stuff and... At, at, and at, oh, and regular Petri's in jail now. Now we got Paper Petri and his wizard slave. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff going on in here. The dog man gets it to laugh, and then it turns out the obey spray just happens to have laughter undo the effects. Oh, very convenient. I, I'm not complaining, Dave Pilkey. I've done this kind of things in the books that I've written too, but I just have to say that is very, very convenient. That laughter just happens to release them from that. Now we got this guy, villain number, I don't even know at this point, and he's got telekinesis and, and the, the freaking super strength. I said freaking. Right, so what happened to that? The fish got really smart because of all the pills, and then he learned how to do telekinesis somehow, and then he started walking around like a human. So like, it wasn't Petri, it was just dual. Here, it kind of looks like Petri's legs, but... What, why would you bother bending this part here? Why Why does this have to look like a foot here? Why would the fish bend it? Like, I don't even know. How does he have telekinesis? Is that something that we can do if we get really smart? I'm also confused too, because it said like only take one dot or else you become really smart. So I guess it makes sense, because like, if anyone gets really smart, I mean like the fish is supposedly dumb. But like supposedly, Humans are the smartest beings on this planet, from our standards, but it makes sense, because, like, you know, like, I mean, like, one, other animals can't talk, but but that has nothing to do with their intelligence, that has to do with their voice box. Even if an animal was as smart as a human, maybe they are, but, it, I mean, like, if they're not, and if they were, then I don't think they'd be able to talk. Maybe their voice boxes can talk, I don't know, maybe, maybe we've done the science wrong, but anyway, um, the point is, is that the fish was supposedly, because, like, you know, like, 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 pigs are said to be smarter than dogs, and chimps are said to be smarter than pigs, and fish, I'm assuming, are, like, on the bottom of the list. So, like, well, like, not at the bottom, but at one of the bottom. Probably at the bottom is, like, a piece of bacteria or something. I just picked up a hair of all things. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, so the fish was, like, nowhere near as smart as a human, from our standards. And the book's canon. Canon means, like, you know, stuff that actually happened like a fan fiction of anything is not canon canon is stuff that happened in the story according to the writer so i guess the mr men and little books mr men and little miss books i said little books but they are little books but they were written by roger hargreaves and then when adam hargreaves took over i guess that's technically fan fiction so i guess that's not canon but but roger hargreaves i guess like must have signed a contract or signed and said well, Adam Hargreaves is related to him, but I'm assuming that he's saying, like, anything that you write now is canon. But anyway, okay, what am I talking about? Right, so the fish got super smart. So supposedly, imagine if a human took that many pills. They'd probably be able to, like, destroy the universe if they wanted to. If the fish can get telekinesis from that, imagine what a human, one of the, if not the most smartest species on the planet, took all those pills. Imagine if, like, Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory took them. Okay, so I get why he would say, like, don't take as many pill and that many pills or something bad will happen, we're not saying what. Because if they said what, and it's like, you'll become the most smartest person ever, then people would be like, heck yeah, we're eating them. But, like, where was I going with this? A whole bunch of stuff happens in the fish finds body snatching for dummies, because, you know, that's a book that exists. And he figures out how to get his essence out, and Dogman sees it as a ball, and holds it in his mouth until it disappears. Dogman held an actual essence in his mouth. Do you know how disturbing that sounds? And then we're immediately greeted with this picture. I can't, I'm stuck for a word. What does this mean? Introduction to a chapter. What's the word? I don't know. But, um, uh, yeah, this looks kind of dark. Anyway, so Paper Petri gets wet and then frozen, and then the paper can't move anymore because it's frozen, wet, and then they fold it like a sled, and then... Then this guy laughs, and then he's free from his obey thing. And I'm not sure why... My shadow's kind of in the way, but I'm not sure why that this...
kind of just feels out of place. The animation feels a bit differently. Maybe the computer animation was a bit different. And the wither, the withered, the wizard brings some scissors to life and they decide to attack Petri and grow eyes for some reason and they're attacking Petri for some reason and some more Flipporana and then uh, and then Paper Petri just runs off into the distance and I guess he's not going to do anything anymore. No, that's the end. And we got a commercial for a uh, Dogman uh, 3, A Tale of Two Kitties. And I personally had no idea that that was a ripoff from The Tale of Two Cities, but I, I'm not much of a reader in the past for past books. And then, oh, Dogman and the Wrath of Petri, finally. That was first mentioned way back in book 11 of Cabin Underpants. What was it? Book him, Dogman. I already did that. Bark Knight Rises. Still waiting on that one. And Dogman 2, The Wrath of Petri. There it is. You can learn to draw some Dogman. And learn to draw some Petri. And learn to draw some Flat Petri. And then learn how to draw the fish. Then learn how to draw the poodle. And learn how to draw more of the poodle. And learn website. And commercial for his past books, and then about Dave Pilkin about the colorist, and then that's it. Are there only going to be like 12 Dogman books? Okay, anyway, I'm... Oh my god, my wrist still hurts. When I do my wrist like this, it hurts. It wouldn't be as annoying if it didn't hurt that much on this wrist. But like, when I do it on this wrist, it's fine. When I do it on this one, it hurts. It's been like that for a month. Okay? You will. Okay, anyway. Sorry, people, you're fine. But anyway, uh... Okay, that was Dogman 2, or, well, Dogman 2, not The Wrath of Petri, but Dogman Unleashed. Uh, really great book, got so much stuff going on. Um, like, personally, like, now, like, I don't find as much excitement in it as I think I would have when I was a kid, because, you know, now I'm a teenager and I'm into, like, more, you know, stuff. But, <laughs> well, don't date the, the wrong way. Like, like, I've seen, like, movies, like, like, where, like, there's all those kinds of stuff going on. But, yeah, Dogman 2, I have a feeling that for a kid, like, my kid self would have really enjoyed that. Because that has so much stuff going on. It's got regular Petri, it's got paper Petri, it's got the wizard, it's got the sprays, and it's got the T-Rex, and it's got so much stuff going on. Anyone who likes to... A any kid out there who wants to read a book where there's so much stuff going on and they have to solve it, and then... Everything just comes to a wonderful close at the end. Get that book. Okay. Yeah, it's it just like, it had so much stuff going on, and like, it held it, like, it, like, regular Petri was kind of defeated about halfway through the book, but like, they just, it's like Superman 2. It's got so much stuff going on, yet they handled it so well, except in Superman 2, they didn't show Superman getting his powers back, which made no sense. But anyway, um, yeah, great book. Uh, the next books are even better. I'll review those. Sometime. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like so now I know they enjoy it. And if you didn't like it, please dislike so now I know they didn't enjoy it. I gotta stop snapping my fingers because it makes it go a little weird. But anyway, uh, leave a comment down below if you'd like to turn on why because it feels awesome. Get some motivation and encouragement. If you didn't like please leave a comment down below saying why you didn't like it so I can prove it next time. Though you won't be able to prove it, I'm just gonna show you this second before I like And subscribe to Danny. You know when the next video comes out. Thanks again so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time where I review Dogman 3 A Tale of Two Cities. Tales to kitties. I actually didn't mean to say city. Okay, anyway. Bye-bye. Okay. I, I hit the pin. I hit the pinwheel again. I'm hitting pinwheels with my arms. Okay.